trading with standard deviation. So one of the things that we do at Tasty is obviously we use math and we use stats and we use probabilities and we like to use, you know, these mathematical principles as our guide, as our north star to help us kind of, you know, move forward and walk through the woods, kind of move forward and kind of make our way through the forest. Well, one of the big metrics of the mathematical you know, underlying principles and the overarching st uh, statistical distribution or whatever is going to be standard deviation. And so understanding and applying something as simple as, as elementary as standard deviation can be very, very helpful. So Ryan, bring us into the slide here today. And I say that a bit facetiously, of course, because if you're brand new to the program, like if you're brand new to trading, like this is not going to be elementary to you at all. But if you've been trading for a while, you're like, ah, Jim, I've heard this before. Let's get to the fun stuff. Like, let's get to the Shooter McGavin strategies. Like, I don't want to hear about this, whatever. But people are all coming in to Tasty Nation from different, you know, uh, experiences and different perspectives. I mean, some people have been trading for a while. Some people are just getting started. So for people that are just getting started, this is going to be a really radical way to think about math and stats and probabilities and how to tie it into your to your trade. So the normal distribution. So obviously, if you look on that slide there, that is a normal distribution. That is a bell curve, right? If you look at the aqua or kind of the teal uh, bell curve, that is the standard plain vanilla Betty Crocker normal distribution. Like it's, it's not, you know, there's no asymmetry. There is no skew. There is no kurtosis. Like this is your textbook definition of a normal distribution. Well, obviously in the actual markets, we have things like skew. We have things like kurtosis. And so we make adjustments for that. I've talked about those different things at various times, you know, on the network and on this show and on the skinny with Tom and Tony and, you know, all these things, trade logic unlocked from way back, you know, like three years ago when I used to get out with Tom and Tony on Thursday mornings for Trade Logic Unlocked before that show got canceled. And so that show is over and done with. But we, we've talked about this a number of times with, uh, with skew and kurtosis and all those things. But if we just think about a basic normal distribution, like if you're brand new to trading, like hopefully this is going to begin to set the foundation for why we do it. If you're looking at a basic normal distribution, and you're thinking about, all right, you know, I have the center point of the normal distribution. I have kind of the, the center of mass in the normal distribution, which if you are in a stats class and you were doing equations and you were completing your homework or you're trying to pass an exam or whatever, this is usually going to be referred to as the mean of the population. Or if there is perfect symmetry, you could also use the median. You could also use the mode. Like there's a couple different, you know, metrics you could use there, but the mean is going to be your most common metric that you use to apply to the midpoint of the distribution. Well, for us, we're not trying to pass an exam. I'm not trying to submit my stats homework here today. Like I'm trying to make some money. Like I'm trying to actually build a portfolio that's going to help me achieve whatever financial goals I might have in terms of maximizing returns, in terms of minimizing risks, in terms of potentially doing both at the same time or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the mean. I'm going to take away this just purely academic statistical metric, at least in this context, and I'm going to remove that and I'm going to insert S sub zero. And this, of course, is the stock price today. So I'm not looking at a mean. I'm not looking at a median. I'm not looking at a mode. I'm not looking at any of those things. I'm going to say, hey, let me build a normal distribution around where the stock price is right now. And the great thing about everything I'm going to talk about here for the next couple of minutes is we don't have to actually build this. We don't have to actually do this. Like you don't need pencil, paper, you know, well, graphing paper to get a nice and symmetric. You don't need any of that. It's all going to be done for you in the platform. It's all going to be done for you, you know, in real time in the markets. And that's what's great about using the Tasty Trade platform, which is still so weird for me to say. But nevertheless, it is the reality that we find ourselves in here today. So if I put the current stock price in as kind of the, the meat and potatoes of this distribution, the center point, what I can then do is I can go out, you know, one standard deviation on either side. That's going to be your 68% range there. I can go out two standard deviations on either side. That's going to be your 95% range there on the slide. Hey, I can go all the way out to three standard deviations on both sides if I want to. That's going to be your 99% range. And what I can start to do is I can begin to use my short option strategies, my short option philosophy around these ranges and around these expected and anticipated movements in the stock, whatever stock I might be looking at. Like for S sub zero, I can use Chipotle. I can use Tesla. 
I can use IBM. I can use Pepsi. I can use the S&P 500. I can use whatever I want to use. And then the probabilities are all going to be associated with that specific underlying. But when I start thinking about short option strategies and I start thinking about how to position my strike selection inside of these strategies, whether it be a strangle, whether it be a short put, whether it be a short put spread or whatever, I can begin to think about, all right, where is the one standard deviation marker on both sides of the distribution? This is just such a good starting point for trade analysis. This is such a good starting point for trade entry. You know, where is that one standard deviation marker? Like, let me go ahead and set an anchor right there and maybe begin to build my strategy from that. It doesn't matter why to choose that strike, but it's so helpful to begin with that as my anchor point and then begin to navigate forward through the forest from that point. Like, it's always nice whenever you're, you know, whenever you're going on a journey, right, for all my journeys men and journeys women out there, whenever I'm going on an adventure, I go on many adventures. I have three small kids. We go on adventures on the daily. And I'm talking about adventures just in the den, you know, trying to change, you know, Amelia's diaper while the other two are just, you know, fighting and throwing punches at each other. Like that's an adventure in and of itself. Well, when that happens, when you're going on an adventure, whether it be in your den or whether it be out in the wilderness, it's always nice to have a way station here or there, right? It's always nice to have a landmark or a reference point. Well, that's what this one standard deviation marker can be for you with your option strategies. So if you look like right here, if you look in the blue, the blue color, where I kind of dropped to that SP right down on the minus one standard deviation marker, if I were to sell a put right there, then what that's going to do is it's effectively going to allow me to, you know, understand and kind of numerically represent, okay, what am I wanting to happen with this short put? Well, what do I want to have happen with any short option? I want it to expire out of the money. Now, of course, I'm going to manage it. I'm going to do different things. I'm going to, you know, make adjustments. I'm going to, you know, do all these different things that are associated with the actual strategic elements of the trade. But just by and large, very simple at the outset, I want this to expire out of the money. Well, with a short put strike, what would need to happen for that to expire out of the money? The stock needs to finish above that level. So if I look at a normal distribution, and I look at where I place my strike at the short put marker at the minus one standard deviation level, there's an 84% chance that the stock finishes above that strike based on this little you know, textbook example of a normal distribution. And when you go in and start selling different you know, puts on different stocks, you're going to see when you put it right around that one standard deviation marker, your probability of profit, your probability of success is going to be right around 84%. Now, the market's a living and breathing thing. It may not be exactly 84. It might be 82. It might be 86. It's going to be around 84, but it may not be exact to 84, like to the actual number. But man, this is so helpful for me to understand. All right, this is where I'm at, at my anchor point, about an 84% chance of success. Maybe I move it in a little bit closer to the stock price to get a little bit more credit and give up some of that probability. Maybe I go out a little bit more to even you know increase my probability of profit even more from 84. Maybe I want 88 or 90 or whatever. So again, this is just a really, really, really good anchor point. And then, of course, if we flip over to the other side of the market, so now I'm looking at the orange elements here that are on the slide today, I could sell a call at the plus one standard deviation marker. And then of course, I'm going to want the market to be below that strike level. So again, I'm also going to have an 84% probability of profit here because I'm capturing you know, the 50% on the left-hand side of the mean and also that additional 34% that's to the right-hand side of the mean, but to the left-hand side of the short call strike placement. And of course, the same thing with the short put that we went through here a couple of seconds ago. And so when I start to think about building option strategies, and I start to think about where I should select my strikes, like where should I place my strikes on a short put, on a short call, hey, on a short strangle, which of course would be the combination of a short put and a short call, where now I'm playing for that middle range. Now I'm playing for you know that, that middle section, which of course you can see hopefully quite clearly here would be 34 plus 34 or 68%. That's where we get that probability from. That's why we like that as our starting point for strangle strike selection. And so regardless of what I want to do, or even irregardless of what I want to do, if want to go at it that way with, hey, you got to adapt your die, man. It's a new time. Like words are coming out of the woodworks every other day now. However you want to play it, short puts, short calls, short strangles, right? Understanding the one standard deviation marker on the plus side and the minus side can be so, so helpful for you in your strike 
selections. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you guys, especially if you're brand new and you just you just started trading. Hopefully you can kind of use this and uh, uh, add this to your strategic repertoire in terms of understanding how to build strategies and start to you know select uh, the different strikes. So Ryan, go ahead and bring us back into the portfolio. So what I want to do now is that was pretty good actually. I feel like you know that was a pretty pretty thorough discussion. Uh, I don't really want to get into any examples here because I can already see the questions are populating quickly. And so I want to get to as many questions from all y'all as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and do that now. And uh, I appreciate you guys, man. If you guys are here with me today, thank you. If you're not doing your actual work that you're, be, that you're being paid to do and compensated to do and you're with me instead, that is a positive thing. That is not a negative thing. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. So Paul says, another tremendous Thursday. Good afternoon to all. What's going on there, Paul? I agree. Good afternoon to you too. Thank you so much for being here. I know you are a regular here on the program, You know, both the live program that we do uh, uh, obviously, uh, every day now, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but even the non-live shows, which we don't have, we don't have any non-live shows anymore. And I mean, YouTube live, we're obviously live all the time on the tasty network, but YouTube live, uh, it's more of a new thing in terms of being live every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So 